Hello to all of my peeps. It's so good to see you here today. From my chair, uh, Let's Talk Missions is how we're labeling this. And uh, thank you for joining us once again uh, from my chair. We're gonna, we are discussing this much needed topic of missions and missionaries and our responsibility uh, as ladies, uh, as Christians uh, in, uh, in the lives of missionaries. Uh, so I'm so excited to have today a guest. I know I'm so excited. I've never been able to do this before. I'm so excited to have a guest sitting beside me, a real, live, uh, moving, breathing, living missionary and a dear, dear friend of mine, uh, Ms. Sarah Glover. And uh, I would like for you to take a moment and uh, greet my peeps. Uh, give us a brief bio uh, of where you serve and uh, what you do on the mission field. So. All right. Well, I am so excited to be here today on this On Your Chair episode. Um, so I've been watching these. I'm uh, a missionary in Papua New Guinea. And so I have been watching these right along with you all uh, and getting to be blessed and growing um, and having uh, encouragement from them as well. And so uh, I live in the jungle in Papua New Guinea. I'm on a satellite internet connection. And so we used to say it's a little slower than dial-up used to be, right? Yeah. And so uh, sometimes I see like five minutes and then I go boil a pot of water and I come back and see another five minutes and got to let it load a while and things. But uh, I'm here in Georgia right now today and so I'm excited to um, get to be a part of this uh, episode. So as I said, I'm a missionary in Papua New Guinea. I have been over there for 11 years now, coming up just in March, it'll be 11 years. Um, and I've done a lot of different things over there, caused all sorts of problems, right? <laughs> uh, no, the Lord has let me be involved in very, uh, uh, various ministries over there. And uh, I have done uh, literacy, I've done a lot of literacy over there. So um, I'm in a tribal group um, in the middle of the mountains in the Gulf Province in Papua New Guinea. Uh, they estimate that there's 40,000 people in this tribal group. It's called the Kamea uh, tribe. And we're right in the middle of the mountains there in Papua New Guinea. And from where I live, you can hike three days in any direction and still be within my people wow. group right there. Wow. Um, and uh, their language, they have a spoken language but not a written language. So we, that is one of the things I've been working on over the years, my, myself and my teammates and our national co-workers there, is getting that language into writing so that we might translate the Bible right. into that language. Um, so I've been involved in that over the years. So because of that, I've done literacy. I've been trying to teach people to read uh, the trade language so that uh, down the road when they're able to learn to read their tribal language, they've already had the process of learning to read and it becomes easier right. than for them at that point. Uh, we have a clinic there. Um, uh, the Lord has blessed us with a wonderful clinic ministry. We see about uh, 1,000 to 1,500 patients a month. Um, so I've been involved in that different levels at different times from not being involved in it at all to uh, managing it myself. and. Uh, God has blessed that ministry just a way to show the love of Christ to people. Uh, as we try to meet their physical needs, we can um, speak to them about their spiritual needs as well. Fantastic. And uh, so we have that ministry, so I've been involved in that. Um, in the translation uh, part of the ministry, I've been involved in translating Bible stories. I do a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one discipleship. Mm -hmm. uh, I've t I teach classes. I've taught junior church, teach the teens sometimes. Um, teach down in the local village school at times, uh, religious education classes, do all sorts of things like that. Right. Uh, and then just recently, actually in 2020, I know everybody's like, oh, I did this in 2020, and it's normally followed by something negative. Right, right. Uh, but in 2020, we got to see something exciting happen over there in Papua New Guinea, and that was uh, for seven years, our church over there, Cody Town the Baptist Church, had prayed for a Christian school. Mm -hmm. And we had prayed and asked God um, to allow us to see that come to fruition. And in 2020, well, beginning back in 2019, but in 2020, God brought that in fruition. And uh, in February of 2020, 2020, in February of 2020, Cody Town and Baptist Academy uh, was started. And uh, so you are now a Christian educator. I am, I am. So we have a Christian school over there now, and I'm teaching, administrating, cleaning, doing whatever needs to be done. And um, God's given us a great group of students, and February 2021, we'll start our second year. And you've, allowed, you've been able to see many of your students saved. Yes. Uh, she calls them her littles. So mm -hmm. if you follow me on Facebook, follow her on Facebook, uh, you'll get to see a lot of updates from her, her littles, and then she's got an older class. But many of them have trusted Christ uh, as their Savior on their very first uh, year of school. 
and uh, excited about that. Even got baptized. Even yeah, the last Sunday I was there, which was really cool. I was back in the states for about seven weeks, and the, but the last Sunday I was there, we had a baptismal service. Baptize them in the river. I love that. And uh, had 18 people baptized, and seven of them were my little. Isn't that so, neat? Isn't that neat? Just that sharing exciting. the gospel. I love that. So then, last week we discussed uh, with my peeps some practical ways that uh, that we can connect. Remember that word connect. That we can connect with with your missionary. Remember that your missionary. It's not just the church's missionary. By the way, we're in our missionary hallway at the Crescent Baptist Church, also called the Hall of Heroes, and uh, there's missionary letters, and uh, basically, uh, the, uh, uh, the sanctuary, if you got to go to the bathroom, you've got to come through the missionary hallway, and uh, you get the opportunity to read the missionary letters and see their prayer cards and things. But it's not just about uh, oh, we have this humongous list of missionaries at our church, and we just we just love them. Oh, I wanted you to pick your missionary. You choose a missionary and connect uh, with that missionary for the purpose of knowing how to better pray for them. Because, remember we talked about? Because when I uh, pray, when I begin to pray for my missionary, I am being very intentional in loving them beyond our yearly quote-unquote missions emphasis week or our missions our yearly missions conference or if you have a month-long missions meeting uh, our faith promise missions meeting uh, but you're going to love them beyond that and uh, so choosing that missionary and praying for them and loving them beyond so then my first question sarah is this how valuable is prayer to you and your work as a missionary. Now, I'm not talking about your personal prayer life. I'm talking about um, prayer from your peeps. Your peeps out there, my peeps out there that are looking at this and saying, what is my role? How valuable is the prayer, my prayer, their prayer to your ministry? Tell us that. Talk about that for us. Uh, what an amazing question. I love that question. Um, you know, I was thinking about these some of these, uh, these things the other day and uh, we live in a culture now where, you know, we watch movies and things, right? And, and you watch these movies and you can see in an hour and 20 minutes, you can see everything happen right. that matters, like in this person's life. Right. So this guy's walking out, he's got a cup of coffee, he spills it on his shirt, so he's got to go back and all of a sudden, it's like the whole trajectory of his life has changed, right? right. And we can see all that in an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, but that's not real life. And so um, as we pray as, uh, for one another and for missionaries, God is continually doing things that sometimes we get to see and sometimes we don't ever get to see. Right. And I think that's going to be a cool thing in heaven is to see like, oh, this happened because of this. Of and, yeah. and sometimes, every once in a while, we get to see a little piece of it, but most times we don't. But um, I think that is just going to be a really cool part of heaven yeah. to see that. And um, so prayer for the prayers of others in my ministry has been huge. Right from the very beginning, I did um, deputation a long time ago now. And um, I remember, though, when I was on deputation, I, um, I was praying for the support that I needed and things like that. But something got laid on my heart when I did my deputation. And I found a person in my church, um, in my home church, and I knew that that person knew how to pray. And I went to them and I said, hey, I'm getting ready to do deputation. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I need God to end on this. And I don't want to just, I don't want a bunch of meetings. I want to make connections with people. I want to... Um, I wanted to be God in on this. Right. And so I gave that person my schedule. Mm -hmm. And every single meeting I was at, they were praying for me. And they were praying over that meeting. Oh, and God. they're praying that God would work on that and uh, establish those connections like you were talking about. Yeah. And they would actually become connections. And when I look back on my deputation part of my ministry, that, that, that was the key that like people ask well how did deputation go well what good well how, why did it go good well because i felt like god was in on it and i think that was a huge part of it when i just look back on it and uh, i have this song i like i like you know, some different songs um but there's it's an old song that's in, in in the hymnal at our church it's in hymn 572 verse 3 so like you know how these you like see something <laughs> yeah. like oh the bible that's very weird you know so it's 572 verse 3 but it's an old uh, hymn and it's called from every stormy wind that blows or it's called the mercy seat okay. uh, in some hymnals and uh, verse 3 that it says it's not about how we come to god in prayer and how, what that does for us and uh, verse 3 that says there is a place where spirits blend 
where friend holds fellowship with friend, though sundered far by faith they meet around one common mercy seat. Mm -hmm. So I'm in Papua New Guinea. I'm in 10,000 miles away from uh, where most of my friends and supporters are. But through prayer, folks are able to enter into the ministry right. with me in those times. And um, I have a wonderful team of supporters that pray for me. Uh, pray for me and support me financially, supporting churches and things that pray for me. And I'm so grateful to that. The financial part is very necessary. I'll never say... No, I don't need the finances, because I need the finances too, right? That's what keeps me right. there, um, gets me there, uh, allows me to live there right. and things. Exactly. Um, but there are so many times when prayer is needed even more than my financial support is. You know, and I've been just thinking through some of those times, and I mean, there's so many I could list, but in the, last, in the years since I've been there, where prayer, yes, I need the financial support, but where the prayer has been key. Uh, so, like, just some instances I thought of, like, you know, when I'm asleep at 2 a.m. and they come and come knocking on my door right. and it's like, oh, we've got this emergency in the clinic. Whether it's a baby that needs to be delivered or somebody's cut themselves or uh, a baby's fallen into a fire and has burns or somebody's, a tree's fallen on somebody. Um, or maybe when I'm trying to teach the young people over there, um, especially we recently had a conference on purity with the young people. It's yes. a huge issue uh, for the young people over there and they battle that uh, in their culture a lot. Uh, or uh, there was a case I was uh, donating blood one time, really? um, wow. and we were doing it in hopes that uh, somebody's life would be extended, mm. so that they could hear the gospel right. of an elderly wow. person. And at the end of that story is that that's indeed what happened. When wow. they became a believer, <laughs> they're, they're in heaven now. I love um, that. Mm. Uh, or when I, I live in the jungle, right? And so uh, when I'm needing clouds to move, I haven't had supplies for three months, and this is the one chance for the plane to go. And I need those clouds to move where the plane can't land. Right. Uh, or uh, when I'm trying to figure out how to start a school, <laughs> you know, like, okay, what do we do? Like, right. I need books. Okay, what do we do? And then I get to see God provide that. Uh, or as happened to me this year when, okay, because of COVID travel restrictions and the way it messed up travel, all of a sudden one day I'm here with my teammates and then the next day I'm here alone for the first time in the job. Wow. For the first time yeah. in, you know, in 10 years of ministry. Unbelievable. Um, and at all these times, um, it's at times when I'm grateful for my, uh, my supporters, those who pray for me, those who support me financially. Uh, but it's at those times when I'm not thinking, I hope somebody at Crestwood Baptist Church put their missions support in this month. That's true. Wow. I'm not thinking that. I'm thinking, I hope somebody at Crestwood Baptist So you're not Baptist thinking money. Right. When you need clouds to move and a plane mm -hmm. to come in. When someone, a kid has fallen into a fire and you've got to figure out what to do, you're not thinking money. Mm -hmm. You're not thinking paychecks and I hope they paid their missions, their faith promise mission. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I hope somebody at Crestwood Baptist Church is praying for me right now. Yeah. Uh, because that's the only thing that is going to get us um, through that. So to come back to your original question, how important, how valuable is prayer in my ministry? I would answer it and I don't think I would be being, uh, what's the word I want? Uh, fanatic or something to answer it this way, but yeah. uh, I think prayer, it's not just valuable. Without it, without the prayers of others, I don't have a ministry. Um, wow. So that would be my answer to that question. Wow, fantastic. Do you get it, girls? Do you understand what she's talking about? Yes, they need your missionaries. Pick one. Just pick one. I mean, there, there's dozens of them behind me. Pick one. But it's more than just you know, going without your Burger King or your Chick-fil-A or, you know, going without your Coca-Cola and your M&Ms and so that you can support a missionary. It's more than that. It goes deeper than that. If you want to connect with them, pray for them. Pray for them. And not just, Dear Jesus, bless Sarah. Dear Jesus, bless Sally Sue. Dear Jesus, bless Billy Bob. Dear Jesus, bless all the missionaries in this country. No. I'm talking about figuring out what they need specifically, and praying specifically. I mean, did you ever, did you get that? Her ministry would not exist without the prayers of her peeps, uh, the prayers of her supporting churches and people that don't maybe don't even support her financially, but they call her name in prayer uh, every week. Those missionaries, girls on your list, they've got to have your prayers. So then, Sarah, let's get down to the nitty gritty of some specifics. We like specifics. We like the nitty-gritty. We like that here. 
what are some ways that we can pray for missionaries that we typically don't think about? Mm -hmm. Give us some of those, please. So before I answer that question, something you just said kind of like triggered something in my mind. Okay. Uh, but just that um, you were talking about connecting and picking one. Right. And that's what we, you were saying about connecting and I was saying about when I was on deputation and I want to connect because the better you know somebody, the better you're going to be pray for them. Absolutely. You know, I, I can them. pray for, you know, this random person um, that I meet and uh, maybe I pray for them, but I would pray for you a lot differently than I pray for a random person, a random person that I pass in the mall and right. I'm like, oh, God bless that person right. or whatever, you exactly. know, because I, I know you. So the better we know one another, the better able we are to pray for one another. Right. Um, so some specific ways. Um, there's so many things I could list. It's so crazy. So <laughs> yeah. um, I'll try not to go overboard. It's okay. uh, but just some specific ways I'm thinking about. Um, one would be their health. Um, okay. Uh, so we don't think about that. Right. We think everything's going to be fine. Everything's great. Right. You know, everything's mm -hmm. wonderful. We don't think about that. Your right. health is so important. And we can pray mm -hmm. for your health. Right. I love that. Uh, we, we joke sometimes. We're like, okay, pray for all the sick people in the world and pray for all the missionaries and pray for all the sick missionaries. <laughs> right? No. Yeah. But pray that their health stays good because uh, that way they can continue right. to minister. Yeah. Uh, a big thing is pray for team dy dynamics. I live in a very remote place. I live in a, and I have a team, which I praise the Lord for. Uh, but even if you're in a, a more populated area, you can have other missionaries that you're interacting with and things. And just pray for that those dynamics is good. That people are learning to walk in humility with one another. That so that's preferring. important. That, it is. That you it pray is. for how other people uh, perceive you and how your team works with you. That's important. It is. The, what, the number one reason for missionaries to leave the field is not sickness, it's not discouragement, it's not whatever. It's the team dynamics. Seriously. Seriously. So if I'm not getting along with one of my team members, that's going to send me home from the field absolutely. quicker than my health deteriorating. Yeah, absolutely. Did you hear that? Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's that. There's This was a... This is a way you can both be a blessing and pray okay. for a missionary. And one that very few people think of, um, or maybe more people do than I know, I don't know. But that would matter. But pray for the missionary's family back in the States. Okay. Uh, because, like, for in my case, of course, I'm a stable missionary, but I have family back here in the States. <laughs> you do? And there is nothing that encourages my heart more than to know, than to hear of other people here ministering and doing what I cannot do, what I would like to do if I was in there. Wow. Uh, when I, I was alone for those those weeks, it was, ended up being about six weeks this past year that I was alone there in the bush. And that was such a blessing for, for my national friends over there on Wednesday nights in our prayer time. They would raise their hand and they would say, hey, pray for Sarah's mom because she can be worried about her. <laughs> she's over here. I love uh, that. But just pray that, I have to say, you know, people say missionaries make sacrifices and I'm not so sure about that. But if there's any sacrifice, I think, to be made, I think it's more on the part of those that are still here. Wow. And um, so pray for their families that God would encourage them and meet their needs. And in, in doing that, that's going to encourage the mission. If you do that and you tell the missionary that as well, right. that's going to encourage I their hearts. I love that. So um, it's not just about you. It's about those that you have had to leave here. Right. Doing God's will. That's your home. You're doing mm -hmm. what God wants you to do. But there are still lonely people here mm -hmm. that would like to see you. And right. that love you and miss you and are worried about you. Mm -hmm. One of my coworkers, my good friend, um, a gentleman, and we were, this was in the early days. We didn't have internet yet or anything. And it was a, you had to use a satellite phone. Oh my. It was like $4 <laughs> a minute. You had to stand in just the right place. And, uh, it was crazy. We call him like once every two weeks or wow. whatever. And I remember, he, I just always remember this, this instance that happened. And he called, it was his grandson's birthday. Mm -hmm. It was his sixth birthday. Okay. And I mean, this is a, again, a good friend of mine, but just a guy, you know, just not an emotional person or anything. Right. But he called his grandson for his birthday back in the States. Okay. Good family, serving the Lord, involved in their church. And said, hey, happy birthday, Ben. I'm so happy. You know, da, da, da. You know, your grandpa loves you or whatever. And, and did that, and he, when he got off the phone, I just remember he just looked up at us and he was like, there's no sacrifice in what we do, but if there is a sacrifice, that is it. Wow, unbelievable. You know? so, so praying ahead to protection about your family here mm -hmm. is important to you as yes. a missionary. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not just about you, it's not just about your ministry, mm -hmm. it's about the families that these missionaries leave mm -hmm. to go to another home 
mm -hmm. uh, to go to another ministry to minister to people. And yeah. even now, safety is a big deal mm -hmm. uh, for, for yourself, yes, but also for your family. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's a big deal. We would not think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. so that would, that would be another thing. Um, just pray that your missionaries don't sin. I know you're like, oh, missionaries are perfect or whatever, but like pray that God would keep them holy and wow. that they would be growing in that's the Lord. Good. And that, I mean, we're people just like anybody else right. and prone to the same temptations that anybody else would be. And in a, in living in circumstances where we might not have all the spiritual input even, so even more open to Satan's devices right. and his uh, attacks. Wow. And, um, so pray that, Sometimes we're like, oh, we can't pray that for missionaries because, like, that would be like rude or whatever, you know. But pray for that. I yeah. want people to pray. Well, that. because if, if if you if you have a hard if we have a hard time mm -hmm. doing what's right, mm -hmm. and you know we affect you know just our families, our ministry here. But if if you get on the off of the right path, you're. You have to stop. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're affecting a whole tribal group of people mm -hmm. that God has sent you to go win, mm -hmm. essentially win to Christ. I remember one thing I read once that was so humbling and so frightening, to be honest, was this, and it said just, and especially in a tribal situation like where we're at, our church is about uh, 14 years old now, and God has given us a good pastor and everything, but when you come into a situation like that, everything they know about what you're supposed to, what, Christianity, what the Christian life is supposed to look like, they're going to learn from you. Wow. Oh my. <laughs> that was, oh, oh my. That's, that's so humbling, isn't it? It is. Oh it is. It's terrifying. Really. Yeah, it is. You know? well, and I think we think that, I mean, me personally, we think that, oh, the, you know, the uh, uh, cursing and pornography and uh, sins of the flesh and music. We think that's just here, mm -hmm. but it's not. Mm -hmm. No, uh, not. I mean, missionaries battle that probably mm -hmm. every single day, and maybe even more so mm -hmm. because Satan is constantly attacking you mm -hmm. because of what you're trying to do in reaching the world for Christ. Mm -hmm. Literally reaching the world for Christ. Yeah. So yeah, just mm -hmm. praying that you don't sin. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Praying yeah. that God will protect you from mm -hmm. Satan right. and the temptations mm -hmm. that he would throw at you. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, just pray for effective ministry, like that. What they're actually doing, yeah, as is, is bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's huge. You want to know that what you're doing is accomplishing something. Right. Um, pray for understanding, because even if if you've been there so long and you know the language well and stuff, there's, you're still always learning culture, and you're looking as a missionary. You might be looking at it one way, but to see how those that you're ministering to are looking at it. Wow. And uh, just to keep that, those things right. in mind. Um, so, pr so pray for that. Well, and, and too, hang on a second. Because one of the big things is Satan will discourage a missionary if there's not a lot of fruit. Mm -hmm. If there's not a lot of productive things and not mm -hmm. a lot of things happening, Satan can get in there and, dis and discourage a missionary, and discourage their heart because they're not seeing... Uh, the, the 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 mission being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So that's a big deal yeah. to, to mm -hmm. see, to pray for your encouragement mm -hmm. and to pray for fruit and for your ministry you know, to see some things happening. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. I, I love that. Uh, yeah, again, I'm a single missionary, but pray for the married missionary, which is the majority. Pray that their marriages stay strong. They're in situations and uh, like uh, I have a married couple, one of my coworkers, and they have kids, and I try to keep the kids from time to time and everything, but there's no place to go. There's no, like, date night or whatever. <laughs> you know, there's, no, there's not even a McDonald's to go to, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, just and you're living in a, in a situation where you're always together. Right. You're not just, it, it's 24-7, 365. Right. And um, so just pray that their marriages remain strong. Wow. Um, it's good over there. Uh, pray for language learning. Continue. I mean, whether they're first week on the field or 10 years on the field, you're right. always learning more. Um, sometimes, uh, I, I know I personally do this for people, just go through the through the epistles and some of those prayers that Paul prayed for churches. And yeah, pray those good. for your missionaries. Uh, pray for one another, but pray for your missionaries. Yeah, um, so those are some of the things. I love that. I love that. Okay. You, you're our ambassador. I mean, you're you're our representative mm -hmm. of the gospel to Papua New Guinea from the Christian Baptist Church, uh, and you've got missionaries in your church that are they represent you, they represent your church. They're they're doing what you cannot do, and uh, we are so honored to call mm -hmm. you our missionary. Uh, and I beg you, girls, I beg you, get you your own, get your own missionary. Uh, take that list in that bulletin every week 
and then go look at your letters on your in your missionary hallway and, uh, and figure out what they need. Follow them on social media and support them with your money. Absolutely, they need your monetary support. Uh, pray for them. Yes, pray for all of them. The whole entire list in your bulletin. Uh, but choose, choose one or two from that list that you can connect with and 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 love extra and pray extra. They cannot do, as you have heard today, they cannot do what they do without the prayers of God's people that are here supporting them, not just with money, but with our thoughts and with our prayers. They have to have, and this is what I was thinking about, Sarah, you have to have us battling with you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You have to have us battling with you. Mm -hmm. Battle peeps. <laughs> mm -hmm. She's got to have some battle peeps. Your mm -hmm. missionary needs uh, bat that battle peeps going with them in prayer. Um, and again, we're privileged to have one more uh, interview uh, with Sarah. And I'll, I'll just tell you, it's even more exciting than this. As amazing <laughs> as this was, uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited about the next one. Um, let me just give you a little segue to it. Many of my peeps out there are young people, Sarah. Mm -hmm. They're teenagers. They actually listen to these. Can you believe that? I, I, I love right. them. I, I love my teenage peeps and my junior age girls, mm -hmm. uh, my peeps, my, my college peeps. I've got some college peeps. Uh, and and they're searching. You're searching, aren't you, girls? You're searching. Uh, we're going to tackle a tough subject next time. Um, Sarah, I really believe that ladies, young and old, and again, this is not just for teenagers, mm -hmm. so no, don't, don't say, well, it's just for the kids for next time. No, 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 it's for all of us. It's for mm -hmm. all of us. Uh, but I really believe that ladies, young and old, in our churches and in our youth groups, they want and they desire to serve Christ mm -hmm. with their lives. Yeah. But, but, they're not really sure what God wants them to do or where God wants them to go. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, That's so, a tough place to be. I know. There. There. <laughs> I know, so stay tuned. Stay tuned uh, for part two of my interview with uh, Sarah Glover, missionary. Uh, to Papua New Guinea because I'm going to ask her some tough questions uh, and I'm com that I'm confident will give some insight, uh, some clarity, some direction uh, that will be geared especially towards my teenage peeps and my junior age girls and my, my college peeps and uh, thank you so much Sarah. Thank you. This uh, was fun. I, I know, know this. I know. I know. Missions and I know. Papua New Guinea and so. I know. It was so much fun and uh, taking the time to do this. And we do look forward to next time. Don't forget, girls, uh, pray for Lydia at 11 with leukemia. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we sure do love you. Thank you so much for Sarah. Thank you for her ministry in Papua New Guinea. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to invest into that. I pray that you would help us to pick a missionary this week, this week. Pick a missionary. Pick two. And just connect extra. Love extra. Pray extra. So that we can love them beyond our missions week. Just, just love them more. Love them extra. And uh, so that we can pray that hedge of protection. Help us to battle with them on their field of service in their ministry. I pray that we would do that. You, they need us. And I pray that you would help us to see that and understand that. And I do pray for little Lydia. That you would heal her uh, of her leukemia. Be with us. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now go be amazing today.